Welcome into Sunday Sermons, and uh, as you may or may not know, we uh, read from, uh, every Sunday we have our, our our scripture, our scripture is from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., uh, the, uh, I guess he's 92 now, the 92-year-old is going to be 93-year-old uh, uh, elder, a real elder, knowledgeable elder, and he's written this book uh, since the 50s, he's been writing this book. Actually, it was the 50s, yeah, 50s has been writing this book. Maybe it was the 40s, who knows. Um, but uh, the book is the United uh, Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. Um, it's a compensatory uh, counter-racist code. Uh, this edition happens to be the uh, 2016 edition. He uh, he had been taking notes uh, since the time he was uh, uh, hanging out in the Korean War. Uh, actually, well, since the time he's been hanging out in the Korean War. And uh, in 1984, he put out this book. Uh, it was a larger format, you know. Uh, um, um, and then uh, people have been saying, hey, you know, you need to update, update, update. And so uh, finally, 2016, he came out with uh, this this volume plus a, a companion uh, volume uh, uh, called Word Guide. And the Word Guide gives you, well, words, like a dictionary, but not quite. Uh, and anyway, so this is the, the revised expanded edition. Um, uh, I'm reading from this one today. Uh, I do actually have the um, the original 1984 edition, but that's down in Africa. That's down in Denbaz. It's, it's bound and everything like that. When I'm down there, then we read from that one. But while I'm traveling around, right now I'm in Harlem, I'm reading from this. And it, it is it is a, a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. defines as white supremacy. Uh, and so this is what we'll be reading from uh, today. Every Sunday we do this reading, uh, no matter where I am. Sometimes I record them way ahead of time, just in case I'm traveling, which I have been doing it, uh, for for a long time here. So this is a uh, one that's sort of update. I, I and and uh, I actually do uh, readings every day, but not from this book, from the uh, Gullah Bible, because uh, I'm from I'm from the uh, here's my Gullah Bible. Uh, usually from the Gullah Bible. Six days a week, I read from from this, the New Testament, the Gullah Bible. My background, I have, uh, or my at least my maternal side, I uh, have uh, uh, Gullah Geechee <laughs> from my great grandfather. Um, uh, but but uh, but that's 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 the a rendition of the King James version of the of the Holy Bible, and um, so that that was. Let's put it this way: uh, they say, well, this is God's word, but you know. God gave the word through 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 a man, and so 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 the man is supposed to you know, you know. The, I guess that that that's the uh, Shakespeare Marlowe kind of writing, old English kind of writing. So that that is sort of like you know, I guess it went from God to King James is inspired to get some people together to you know take some stuff that some some they got from Greek or Latin wherever they got it from, and then they interpret it. It's like the telephone game. So you know things get lost in translation. But here, with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., uh, I guess it's from from. From from God to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. to the page, <laughs> so that's how scripture, and um, and so in fact uh, he's he, uh, if you uh, tune in he has a a, a a transmission that happens over the internet every Tuesday, um, nine to eleven a.m. Eastern uh, Standard Time, um, uh, where he you, you can call in and ask him questions. You know, look it up, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Um, and the the, the I uh, just go to producejustice.com and you get to the website in there. I'll tell you how to listen to them. So, but the important thing, I guess, you know, no, even even in the in the, um, uh, the Islamic tradition or the Muslim tradition, uh, what happened was, you know, uh, Muhammad supposedly got the information, and then Bilal, you know, one of his trusted um, commandants, you know, wrote down what he was saying. So, you know, so that's if God to Muhammad to snake write it down. But this is this is straight and. And actually, I just read it straight, um, uh, but I but for the Sunday sermons, I do uh, I do expand when I do the Gullah readings. I just read it. That's it, because I'm doing something else with that. But this, so I'm I'm going to a page in this um, in this, like I said, the uh, 2016 uh, revised edition. Going to page uh, uh, 256, and uh, they have uh, well six six things. Is this the sixth area of uh, of activity of what he calls uh, human uh, activity. Now there are uh, uh, 
nine areas that he calls the United States. The book is broke, broken up like that. Uh, and uh, the, the nine areas, areas are, are economics, uh, education, entertainment, uh, labor, law, uh, politics, as he calls that, people relationships, uh, religion, sex, and war, counter war. Uh, now, I do, when I'm in, when I am in Dumbaza, we do deal with war, counter war, but it, on his transmissions, he doesn't deal with that ninth, ninth area for obvious reasons. Uh, and I, I do whatever area I want to. Right now, we're in the area of politics or people relations. And, and I'm like this one on page 256. He, there are, he's outlining, let's see, in this chapter, he's outlining some things. But, but, but on this particular page, he has a stop cursing, stop gossiping, stop uh, being discourteous. And he has some notes for that. And it says stop stealing. But those are the major, um, oh, let me show you those are the major things on, on that one right there. See, so for our, our our sermon where I pontificate, oh, the brother used a big word um, on on these Sunday sermons. That's why it takes so long, like uh, like your Sunday preacher, right? And so I'm in fact, let me just start at the top with the stop cursing. I'm just going to read what he says, and then we'll talk about it. And maybe we need to touch on these other things. Uh, three, stop cursing. To curse, okay, to curse. He put curse in, in uh, parentheses, you know, quotes. To curse people is to use profanity towards them in a manner that is likely to be thought of as insulting or aggressive. Right? This often results in the promotion of hostility. The hostility promoted oftentimes serves no constructive purpose. Using curse words, he puts again curse in, 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 um, in quotes, oftentimes promotes name-calling, that's in uh, quotes, discourtesy, and unnecessary fighting and or killing. Okay, straightforward, simple. That's how Ms. Neely for Junior writes. But let's let's talk about this. Now, uh, cursing, again, you know, words do have power. You know, or let's say the, the interpretation of words do have power. Now, if you know certain words, or if you speak in the lang same language, so, so, you know, if you say a certain word, that might insult somebody from that language. Now, if somebody doesn't know the language, or they don't know the culture, they might say something, and then you, you're you thinking like, well, I don't know what they're saying, so it doesn't bother you. Let me give you a slight example when they use regular words. A long time ago, in the 90s, I think it was, when the, when, the, when the Koreans first was coming to the States and, and opening up their little shops, whatever have you, I, I was down the Lower East Side, and I happened to uh, just be there shopping or whatever it is, and this little girl was with her mother, you know, skirt. she, for some reason, I don't know, I don't know what the reason was, right? But she said, she called me a she just called me a monkey and ran behind her mother's skirts, right? Now here's the thing. Now I like I said she's Korean, but in the Asian, other Asian cult, cultures, monkey is a high, you know, it's high praise. It's like a monkey is like a, a god, you know. And so for me, now the way she said it, her inflection, I know she meant it as an insult. But for me, um, like if if in other words, if she said it in Korean, for instance, I probably wouldn't even know what she was saying, right? But since she said it in English, right? I said she was a little girl. She must have been about five years old, something like that, five, six. Um, but for me, because I know in Asian, in some Asian cultures, a monkey is a high praise. And she, she was using it in her, in her language, in her tone. She was using it as an insult. But I, I just turned around in my head. I use this high praise. I said, oh, she's calling me a, 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 an Asian god. No problem, right? But at the same time, you know, if, if uh, and, then, and then, of course, the classic examples, dare I say it? Yeah, well, no, I won't say it. Class of them, especially in the black community, we say certain words, and people, and and uh, especially older people, uh, because they had so invested in that word and, and the negative connotations of it, and, and and how it came about, you know, they're highly insulted. But then the '80s came along, or I should say, the '70s, '80s, when hip hop came along, and they just flipped that word around. They use it, and now you can hear this word. All the young people use it, no matter what their uh, racial class uh, classification. In fact, there used to be a time with, with cursing where women wouldn't curse in public. You know, and in my lifetime, I saw that happen. But that's also certain now women do curse in public, right? And even older people curse in public. You know, I'm saying I'm just using words right now. I'm gonna get to something else here. But here's the thing. And of course, you know, if you if you're in the service, like when I was in the Air Force, yeah. Before I went to the Air Force, I mean, I I, I never really cursed a lot. You know, in fact, my vocabulary was huge. <laughs> I went to Air Force, so somehow my left vocabulary went right down. And we use basic language, but again, I'm not a big cursor. 
But as somewhere along the line, I learned that, uh, oh, I, uh, for, uh, like I said, in my maternal side, um, my great my great grandfather was Gullah Geechee. My my great grandmother married, you know, those two married. That's my maternal side. Uh, she was a uh, American Indian, you know, a Mohawk, uh, Indian, uh, uh, Native American, whatever, whatever they call, whatever call ourselves these days. Um, and of course, as, as we got out of slavery, then, then of course, then at least my uh, uh, great grandfather, you know, became freedmen. They're they're freed. They freed people, right? Uh, but in the in the Native American culture, in some cultures, I guess, or some um, some nations, there was a thing where uh, 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 a girl becomes a woman at 25 years old. Now, let me hold it just for a second. Now, there's also a thing in the medical sciences that your your brain, you know, doesn't really forge altogether until you're 25. So basically, before you're 25, uh, young people they they say they have no clue. Of course, but some people do. But basically, you don't learn a lot until well, 25 is when you start becoming whatever you become. There's a whole other thing I, I go into another thing for, and numerology would deal with that. But at the same time, that same culture says that you know, a woman, a girl doesn't become a woman to 25, but a boy doesn't become a man or a man. I mean, put put it another way, because I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, 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 in in this culture, a woman becomes a woman at 25. A uh, a man becomes a man at 52. I'll let that sink in. At 52 years old. Now, for me, you know, we, we can go back and forth, but for me, with that little bit of knowledge I had whenever I got that back, at some particular point when I was getting much older, because uh, uh, right now, I just, just to tell you right now, I'm 72, so I guess that means something. Um, but I, 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 I always would think about that. And so I was thinking that, yeah, when I'm 52, I become a man. But then um, there's this whole thing about, uh, uh, at least in African, some African traditions, where you know you 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 become a man, you, you initiate it, right? Then at some particular point, when you're becoming an elder, you you prepare yourself for eldership, and then you become an, an elder, and it goes on like that. So on my, I I always uh, I make up. I shouldn't say that. I have my own rituals. Let's put it that way. And so I, at some particular point, I said, okay, so. At 52, I'm going to become a man. Then I, I'm into numbers. So three is one of my numbers. Some point like July 3rd. So three is one of my numbers. So I said, then I said, well, 12 years from then, I'll be 64, right? And so I, I, when I become 64, I want to become an elder. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 an, elder, an elder just means that, that you're a model. You know what I mean? You're not, you're, you, you've are you lived your life and there's certain things you have. And then, you know, you're just chilling. The people come to you and they may, they may ask you for your advice. And so you give them the advice, right? Most of the time, they don't take advice, whatever it is. At least that's my. Maybe people just don't take my advice. Uh, and, 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 and so you don't really push things. You know, somebody says something, you say blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like you say, oh, don't go down that street because, you know, there's a tree there. You're going to delay your thing. They say, ah, oh, man, blah, blah. They go down the street and they, they jump over the tree or whatever it is, you know, like that. Okay. And so so I, I figured that well, I, I have uh, from 52 to 64, I had a chance to uh, really concentrate on becoming an, uh, uh, let's call it a respectable, whatever, uh, an elder that shows that they're an elder, a, a, model el a model elder. So when I became 64, I stopped cursing. Just stop. You know, I don't curse. Now, because I know certain things, I'm human, I do have exceptions, right? The exception is I, I, I am allowed because you have to have release valves. You know what I mean? You can't be stringent all the time. So I'm allowed to curse according to my own rituals, on my birthday, uh, uh, July 3rd, on that particular day, right, uh, or 24 hours, whatever it's like that, on New Year's Eve, they happen to be, you know, six months apart or whatever, you know, that's because New Year's, but it's actually New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, so it's like 48 hours, I can curse then, right, and then I also am allowed to curse, you know, um, because sometimes I have fights with my wife, you know, it sort of slips out. Because remember, um, uh, so-called bad language, it's like a, a, um, a steam valve, you know what I mean? You, sometimes you just automatic, you know, you just just like that. So I'm allowed to do So see, you know, yeah, because sometimes, well, well in, in my house, in my abode, I, I can't curse. Also, I am allowed to curse on a blue moon. I make all this stuff up. The next blue moon, by the way, is going to be, um, I looked it up in March 24th of next year, uh, 2023. 
So, so, so next year I have three, three opportunities to curse, right? And actually, I don't really, even sometimes my birthday, even the thing, I just don't, it's because I haven't been doing it like that. Now you say, oh, what the whole thing on curse. But here, there's also intent. Remember I told you about the uh, the little girl calling me a monkey and his intent, right? I, um, I, um, I trained a, a group of, 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 of young men or a group of young people in radio. They call it Creative Unity. And because we were in, in radio, uh, you can't curse on the air, you know? So when they had to do something like they did a brilliant piece called uh, 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 Jack A. Robinson, like Jackie Robinson as a, was a woman, it's, it's a whole long. They also did a thing called the pit bulls, whatever happened. But they wouldn't curse, but they, they could substitute language. Like instead of calling the person, I'm not gonna say the, the, the white people say that Robinson, you know what I mean? So it's the inflection, you see like that? So I think it's much more creative, but then again, you know, I'm in a creative field, right? I think it's much more creative if you substitute words, just like with, the, stay with the word nigga, right? Uh, uh, Tupac tried to, <laughs> tried, he tried but failed to redefine it by saying N-I-G-G-A, meaning uh, never ignorant, um, uh, uh, giving greatness, um, achieving great, some, something like this, it was, it was an acronym. So it would meant, it meant something positive, but you know, the hip hop community, they wasn't taking that. They just went with the whole, the whole other thing. Was it never, never ignorant, uh, giving greatness achieved. So I'm, I forget. I have it written down someplace. Uh, so, 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 but, but still, in all, you, 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 so it's that, it's that, it's that sound. You know what I mean? That that really messes people up, right? And but, but now you hear it so much, and and, and, and older people will get offended. People will get offended. I don't particularly like the sounds. I don't really. I've never really used the word a lot. You know what I mean? There's other words I don't use, like like like. Like I don't really call women. I don't, I don't. I don't call women. I never use the word bitch and stuff like that. I just don't do that. But but you can see young women and stuff like that. They 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 call each other. They, they do that stuff. That's their culture. That's what they know. Maybe when they get to be you know fifty two, they'll make up their mind. Maybe they'll be sixty four and they'll just do do do. But there's a lot of older people trying. To, I guess you try to be hip or trying to prove they come from the streets. They will use those kind of languages. Um, so I said that only to say. But 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 that cursing. Uh, you put that stigma, you know, you 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 you, you basically curse them. Words have power. You call somebody something, but it's not just the curse. It's, look, everything is vibration, okay? So it's like a vibration. So you put out that vibration, then a vibration, no matter what words you use in front of us, because people can use a different language. And, you know, like uh, they're, um, uh, you know, the Jamaicans say, bumba clock. You know, you, you know what that, that, that means, you know? Uh, uh, um, in, in, in Afrikaans, you know, say you must you know what I mean? Though you can hear, you can hear the, the cursing, right? And you actually, yes, you're cursing someone. You you you're setting a vibration, a negative vibration to envelop them in a negative vibration. Now you, as your own protection, you can you can say knock that negative vibration away. You know, thwart that negative vibration. If in your mind, you know, you know how to deal with vibrations. You say, okay, then my vibration, my inner vibration is stronger than that, so I can just like repel that, you know, knock it away. It's a fight, you know, that, 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 that. But if you, if you, if you can't knock it away and you absorb that, you know, well, then they got you. They uncursed at you. <laughs> so you're, you're done. Um, so anyway, and, and, and a lot of times, um, as, far, as far as the black culture goes, what we do is with this cursing, um, you, you, you go to other things, you know, become beefs, you know, and then you have long, Things of, of cursing and stuff like that, which is not a very, which is not a very good thing, right? So anyway, um, so that's it. That's it for for, for this week. And uh, next week we'll see you again, and uh, we'll talk more about uh, uh, from our from our uh, scripture, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. See you then. A little message. Well, see you then with another sermon from me, T. From the Patterson State of Trains to Bed. Let you know what I only suspect. <laughs>